Hi friends, today we are going to learn the process of attempting the typical DI plot. DI as you all should be knowing, we refer to commonly as data interpretation. Friends, there are five things we should be taking care of while attempting the typical data set. The number one in that happens to be the components. If all of you guys have ever seen a data blog, what happens is so many times the information is given at the top of the graph, maybe at the left hand side or at the right hand side of the graph. So make the point that we must read that information very carefully. It may consist of that the data is being given in millions, the data is given in thousands. Along with that, it could be the data is in tons, quintals. So one, we should be reading all the components carefully. The second point in that happens to be the correlation. So many times what happens is that in a particular data set, there are two and maybe sometimes three graphs are given. So we should be able to relate the graphs between themselves. For example, it could be that the first graph is telling us about the income of different persons and the second graph is telling us about the different, uh, different expenditures by different persons. Now the questions could be based upon the savings done by persons and we should be able to analyze, correlate them that income minus expenditure shall provide us with the savings of different persons. The third important point friends happens to be the choices. We must be taking care of what are the kind of choices which have been given to us in that particular question. So many times the question, uh, choices given are very very close and we need to go to very close calculations and so many times the choices are very very far off and we only need to approximate and answer that. And mind it, it's only 20% of the questions that you have close choices and it is never advisable to spend extra time in even 80% of the questions so that to uh, attempt those 20% questions correctly. The fourth important part in that happens to be the calculations. Friends, make, point this, make this point that while attempting, we should not be calculating all the values exactly. We are supposed to and we must approximate. Uh, let me take an example. Say I take a number particularly 732 and you all should be knowing in order to calculate 10%, we just have to leave one place from the right hand side. That is it happens to be 73.2 which we will take approximately as 73. Now if 10% is 73, 20% will become 146 and so on. We can approximate and we must which helps us saving time and attempting a few more questions in the same time left. Fifthly and very importantly the C factor in that happens to be the confidence. That is, so many times we say that first option cannot be our answer because answer is less than that. Second cannot be our answer because answer is more than that. And fourth cannot be the answer as it is too far off than the real answer. Then we have to believe in ourselves that the answer happens to be the third option. Friends, don't make this that we calculate the third option and check whether it is right or wrong. We have to be very practical at the same time because the time saved at that time is going to help us in attempting a few more questions. In short, we talked about five C's of success in DI. Number one in that was the components given. Number two in that was the correlation between all the graphs. Number three was the choices which are given to us. Number four, calculations we should be doing in a smarter and approximated manner. And lastly, it was C that is confidence. We should be believing in ourselves that the calculation that we have done are perfectly alright. Thank you so much.